Howdy folks, Tex Scrabner here with Tex Scrabner Outdoors. Right now, I'm holding my shaft. Actually, not just one of them, not the one you're thinking. I'm holding 35 shafts. I just got done fletching 35 arrows. These aren't just any old arrows. These are custom safari arrows matched to my 85 pound recurve. However, because this is incredibly boring, grinding out this many arrows, I saved the last one to do right with you guys. And so I hope you guys enjoy watching, seeing me make an 825 grain Cape Buffalo arrow. When you are fletching up three dozen arrows, it is an absolute grind. Very similar to grinding out smithing levels in Skyrim so that you can make the Daedric armor. Now in the end it ends up being worth it, but while you're doing it, it really sucks. Now arrow smithing or arrow fletching or arrow crafting is very meditative and yet repetitive, mind-numbing, and boring. Now it is important that you put spirit to your arrow and that you make your tackle with love. And so that is why I distinguish my arrows with a cresting wrap. You saw me roll it out there on the board and now I am taking double stick fletch tape the quill side of my feathers. I like fletch tape because it sets up a lot faster because as you might have gathered from this dialogue already, I don't have a lot of patience. Now it's important that once you get your fletch tape on your feathers that you let them set. Normally when I'm doing this many arrows, I will fletch every single feather with tape, stack them up, and then let them set until I get all the cresting wraps on the arrows. That way when I go back through, the feathers are all set up and ready for the other step which is putting them in the clamp and pulling off the actual other side of the fletch tape. You want to make sure that you get it good and smooth and lined up with the quill and a scissors is pretty much a requirement. Now I'm going to let these particular feathers set up mostly because I forgot my clamp back in my living room and I'm doing this outside and had to run and get it. Now I've got my feather lined up with a mark. That way all my arrows are fletched identically. The bright color, or in this case the green, is the cock vein. The reason that it's called a cock vein on the shaft, yeah, it's not as dirty as it sounds if only, right? The reason that it's called a cock vein on the shaft is because you would have a cock pheasant which is brightly colored and a hen pheasant which is dull colored and you also traditionally speaking would cock the vein out from the bow or cock the feather in this case out from the bow here you see me removing the tape and placing the fletch clamp into place into the jig and compared to gluing on veins this is remarkably fast now I rotate once I've got the proper feather seating put my feather into the clamp and repeat as I said, 
while this is very wonderful and meditative and, or, and organic behavior, it is as mind-numbing as grinding out smithing level 100 in Skyrim. So I've got my feather in. I've set it in place with a good push. Now I take off my clamp. And here we have a fully crested and fletched safari arrow. The next step is, of course, using, with this particular style of arrow, a torch to heat up my 100 grain brass insert and my point. I had lost track of my pliers at this point, so, of course, I was using a scissors. I'm using a hot glue by bonding hot stick or furl type. And now I simply thread it into the arrow, as you can see. Give it a good push. Turn off my torch. And short of having a broadhead on it, this 825 grain arrow is ready for a Cape Buffalo hunt. Or for the Dragon Apocalypse. You know, speaking of Cape Buffalo, and dinosaurs and dragons this is a 458 lot so stay tuned because we're gonna be busting out the elephant gun here pretty directly I hope you guys enjoyed watching me flesh that arrow I hope that it was somewhat entertaining and mildly educational as always God bless all my sports center of America join the NRA to protect our rights please check out my friends over at legallyconcealed.org Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement, those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tex Grebner Outdoors.